welcome to introduction to simulation so in this video we are going to learn what is simulation what are the advantages and disadvantages of the simulation so let's start solving real world problems can be very expensive so simulation is a way we can solve those problems in a cost effective manner in most cases experimenting in real life uh, consider cases like building or destroying a building or making changes to the building which may be too expensive once the project is finished. So to find this solution we can build a model that mimics the real system in a virtual reality. This process assumes abstraction. We include the details we believe are important and leave aside those we think are not important. The model is always less complex than the real world. While building the model or after completing the model, we can start to explore and understand our system structure and behavior and test how it will behave under a variety of constraints or conditions and compare different scenarios and select the best one. After carefully analyzing the results, we can implement the model in real life. So there are different types of models available including the mental models we all use to understand how things work in the real world. For example, uh, we are always making decisions in our daily life like which phone to eat, which laptop to buy, uh, sorry, which phone to buy and which laptop to buy, which food to eat, which drink to have. So these are all based on mental models. Currently, computers are becoming very powerful, so we can use modeling tools. They offer us a flexible virtual world where we can create nearly anything imagine imaginable. So of course, there are many types of computer models from basic spreadsheets that, that allow anyone to model expenses to complex uh, simulation modeling tools that help experienced users explore dynamic systems such as consumer markets and battlefields. So let's talk about the difference between analytical and simulation modeling. So if we ask a major organization strategic planning, sales forecasting, logistics, marketing or project management teams to name their favorite modeling tool and most of them will answer Microsoft Excel or Google Sheet. Yes, uh, Excel has several advantages. It is clearly available. It is very easy to use and it allows uh, you to add scripts to your formulas as your spreadsheets becomes increasingly sophisticated. So let's talk about the Excel spreadsheet or Google spreadsheet. We are, we are all familiar with it. The operations behind spreadsheet is very simple. We enter data in some cells and we get output in another cell. So formulas and in more complex models scripts link the input and output values so there are different functions and formula formulations available there are also some add-on add-ons uh, which allow us to perform uh, parameter variation monte carlo or optimization experiments however <coughs> there is a large class of problems that cannot be done in Excel or Google Sheet. This class includes dynamic system uh, that feature nonlinear behavior, uh, memory, non-intuitive influences between variables, time and casual dependencies, all above combined with, with uncertainty and a large number of parameters. In most cases, it is pos impossible to obtain the right formulas, much less put together a mental model of such a model, such a system. Consider a problem that requires you to optimize a rail or truck fleet. It is difficult to use an Excel spreadsheet to manage factors such as travel schedules, loading and unloading times, uh, delivery time restrictions, and terminal point capacities. A vehicle's availability at a given location, date and time depends on a sequence of previous events. And determining where to send the vehicle when it is idle requires us to analyze future event sequences. So 
uh, a simulation model is always an executable model running it helps you a trajectory of the system state changes think of a simulation model as a set of rules that you ha know how to move from a system's current state to a future state the rules can take many forms including differential equations state charts process flow charts and schedules the model's outputs are produced and observed as the model runs simulation modeling <coughs> requires special software tools like that use simulation specific languages while you will need some training to do uh, simulation modeling well your time and effort are rewarded when your model offers the high quality analysis of a dynamic system so i'll be uploading several videos after the introduction video uh, on how to develop your skills on simulations so many people especially those who know microsoft excel well or who have programming experience try to use a spreadsheet to model a dynamic system as they try to capture more and more detail they inevitably start reproducing the functionality of excel simulators the resulting models are slow and unmanageable and they are usually thrown away quickly so it is very difficult to capture any of those de details in in an any logic system even if there were formulas to guide your configuration even a small process change uh leave the whole model void and you need to start to work from this scratch again so let's talk about the advantages of simulation modeling simulation modeling has key six advantages over any other modeling techniques so the first one simulation models allows us to analyze systems and find solutions where methods such as analytical calculations and linear programming fail so once we have chosen an abstraction level it is easier to develop a simulation model that an analytical model uh, it typically requires less though and the development process is scalable incremental and modular a simulation model structure naturally reflects the system structure so if you understand the system structure you can easily simulate in this simulation in a simulation model you can measure values and track entities within the level of abstraction and you can add measurements and statistical analysis at any time so the ability to play and animate the system behavior in time is one of simulation's great advantages you will find animation useful for demonstrations verification and debugging so if you get a animation of your real world problem in a computer you can find different problems there you can work on those problems and you can perfect your project so uh, the last one simulation models are far more convincing than excel spreadsheets if you use a simulation to support your proposal you will have a ma major advantage over those who only use numbers so let's talk about the applications of simulation modeling simulation modeling has accumulated many success stories in a wide and diverse range of application areas as new modeling methods and technologies emerge and computer power grows we can expect simulation modeling to enter an ever larger number of areas so Uh, we are going to divide the abstraction level into three categories we are going to call them low abstraction level medium abstraction level and then high abstraction level okay <coughs> uh so let's talk about the three methods in simulation modeling modern simulation modeling uses three methods and they are discrete event simulation agent based simulation and system dynamics okay so discrete event simulation is uh, between uh, low abstraction level and the medium abstraction level okay and the uh, agent based modeling we can consider it from low abstraction level to high abstraction level okay and system dynamics is always high abstraction level modeling so each method serves a specific range of abstraction levels 
System Dynamics assumes very high abstraction and it is typically used for strategic modeling. Discrete event modeling supports medium and medium low abstraction. In the middle are agent based models which can vary from very detailed models where agents represent physical objects to the highly abstract models where agents represent competing companies or governments. So we should always select our method after we have carefully considered the system we want to model and our goals. In the figure below, the modeler's problems will largely determine how they model a supermarket. They could build a process flowchart where customers are entities and employees are resources, an agent based model where consumers are agents who are affected by uh, advertising, communication, and the interactions with agents and employees or a feedback structure where sales are in the loops with ads, quality of service, pricing and customer loyalty. So we can also find that the best way to model the different parts of a system is to use different methods and in these situations a multi-method model will best meet our needs. So leave a comment below if you find this uh, video helpful you can subscribe to our channel like this video and if you have any questions please leave a uh, comment below I'll be glad to answer those and I'll be releasing a series of videos regarding the tutorial we'll be learning how to do the system dynamics how to create agent based modeling and discrete event simulations with uh, practical examples okay so have a good day thank you